Hey guys, it's Alan from DW again, and welcome back to DW Soundworks. In this video, I'm going to go over our grooves page in Soundworks. We're going to learn how to create grooves, edit grooves, save grooves, export grooves, both externally and to the DAW. Let's jump right in. All right, I am in the grooves page in Soundworks, so let's take a look at it. It is really cool, easily laid out, easily used. Uh, it's it's super simple to use. On the left side, we have a list of our packs. This is the core library, so you can see we have the 50th anniversary, Maple Mahogany, Pure Almond, Pure Maple, Gretsch USA, and Slingerland Vintage. With each one of those packs, you'll see in the next column, we have a couple of styles that come with it. Uh, so everything from jazz to pop and reggae, funk and gospel, metal and R&B, pop, uh, pop country and rock. For each uh, of the styles, there's a name given to it. So this is pushing ahead for rock or feeling it for pop country. And then finally, we have the patterns for each one of those. Uh, we start with bridges. It's in alphabetical order. Everything up through verses, fills, endings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Next window down is our composer or composition window. You have a cut tool right here. It turns blue when you turn it on. You can zoom in or out. Obviously, you can use your mouse wheel as well. Uh, when it's populated, this will work as well. You have a looping option right there. And then you have your main menu for this section, which you can save compositions, load compositions, or clear compositions. And we'll get back to that towards the end of the video. And then we have a transport bar here at the bottom, starting with play, pause, and stop. You have your looping on or off, and you have autoplay. Now, autoplay is really cool if you want to put something together and you want to hear things fast to choose from. So uh, with it off, you have to choose something like this fill here and then hit play. Whereas opposed to turning it on auto play on, you can just grab and play. Listen to it, go next. So it's instant. So I like to, when I'm, when I'm building something, I like to leave auto play on so I can just grab it and pull it in. Next, you have your tempo here. You can change that at will, however you need. Uh, snapping goes from uh, half to quarter, eighth, and down to sixteenth. You have playback options, half speed, full speed, double speed, and then you have a dynamic range uh, limiter, if you will. Uh, it allows you to shave off a little bit of the higher notes or bring up a little bit of the lower notes. And then finally, you have your exporting options, which you can export to a DAW, uh, export to a MIDI file itself, or save a wave. Now, I've purposely started this up in, in standalone because I have Studio One running in the background to show you how you can work in standalone and create your compositions, get them the way you want, and then you can jump into a DAW at any time. You can also do this within the DAW in the VST itself, but some of us may just want to mess around in standalone and then uh, just dump it into the DAW. So that's what we're going to do right now. So I've got autoplay on. I'm going to listen to some things, and we'll just populate the composition here. So let's start with fill A. That sounds good to me. Um, I hate to hit it and drag it in there. It's going to play. All right, that's the fill we're going to start with. Let's go to verses. Let's try C. Fine. And I can stop it there. I'm going to go ahead and cut this down with my cut tool right here. And we're just going to make this a short little demo. So we'll just keep like uh, the first four. One, two, three, four. I'll cut right here. And we'll get rid of that second part. Start my cut tool back off. And then uh, let's do a chorus. Okay, so we have a ride in there. We'll go ahead and do that. And we'll do the same thing. We'll just uh, cut off like uh, four bars here. So I'm going to go back to my cut tool again. One, two, three, four. And cut it right here and get rid of that second section. And let's go find us an ending. Let's do C. Okay, and I'll cut off. Uh, let's just keep those last two. And turn my cut tool back off. And drag that in here and shorten this down a little bit. Actually, I just need this crash right here. So let's turn on our loop, or set a section here, and turn off autoplay, and let's listen to our composition. And it 
it's looping. So I'm going to cut these down just to make it a little bit shorter. Uh, but let's go with that and turn my cut tool back off. Move these closer together. So I've got, I guess this is eight bars. And then don't really have to do the loop. Um, I'm just doing it out of habit. And now I want to save the composition. We'll get back down to, uh, actually, you know what we're going to do? Let's check the dynamic range. So I'm going to hit stop and play it again. And I'm going to listen to the hi-hat. Yeah, so I wanted to bring that the dynamic range of that hi-hat up a little bit. So I'm just... Bumped up the low end about to 35 there. And I'm going to leave the top end where it is. It's fine. So now I have a composition. So next thing I would do is probably just go ahead and save the composition to my desktop. We'll call it my oops, uh, masterpiece. So it is now on my desktop. I'll drag it in there so you can see it. It's right up here in the corner. It's called a DW comp file for composition file. And then I also can drag this to my DAW. I can export a MIDI. Let's do that first. I'll export a MIDI to the desktop. And I'm going to call that my MIDI. And it will save over here out of your site. And now it's in your site. So there it is there. So now you can use that MIDI file anywhere that you need to use it. And last but not least, I can drag it into Studio One. You take this little glowing button here, which is a little hard to see at the moment because it lights up the second you add anything. And it just has the MIDI with an arrow that shows you can drag it like this over to your DAW. I don't want to load my general MIDI sounds. I'll click no. And I definitely want a prettier color. Let's go with just some kind of purple. That's fine, whatever. And then if I double click that, you can see I have my composition down here at the bottom. Let's go ahead and drag our Soundworks VST on top of that. It'll populate in Studio One. What I wanted to show you is that you can do this. You have versatility to do whatever you wish. You could have done all this in the DAW itself, or you could have done it like I did it outside the DAW. Uh, the point is you have options. If you just want to sit down in the afternoon with a standalone and build something, play guitar to it or what have you, and get something built the way you want, and then drag it into a session and get to work later, you can do that. You have that option. I'm going to go ahead and close Soundworks there. Uh, I am going to go ahead and set the um, Studio One here for drumming and choose my Soundworks map thing that I created and zoom in. And now if I take, let me go to Mix, bring this up, bring that up, bring up Soundworks, make sure I'm using the same kit, which actually I just happen to be using. And now we can hear uh, the, basically the same thing in Studio One. I think it'll be a little bit louder, but you'll get the point. So let's go over here and play it. I think you get the point. So really versatile. Um, it's I really love this section of Soundworks. It's so much fun. Uh, finally, you can save as a wave. I won't go through that. It's simply what you've already seen. It'll save a wave for you, and then you can put that wave wherever you want. Uh, if you don't like working with VSTs, you could just drop a wave in there instead. So last but not least, you can clear the composition right here. Uh, you click your menu, click clear. Now, one of the reasons I like to clear it is because if I ever save this kit, I don't like all that extra data inside it. But if you do want to keep uh, compositions within a kit preset, you can. I can resave that kit preset, and it will save your composition with inside uh, the preset itself. So that's kind of cool, too. Lots and lots of options. That's what it's all about, right? <laughs> all right, that's going to do it for the Grooves page. Hey, thanks for sticking around. I'm glad you made it this far, and I hope our video helped you. I hope I was able to shine some light on a lot of the features in Soundworks that will help you get started making your own presets. Please be sure, if you haven't already, to go ahead and subscribe below so that you can get notified of upcoming tutorials. I'm going to have probably several more come out that will help you uh, dig even deeper into Soundworks. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.